Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, April 26, 2020, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, COVID-19 update. Slight wind out tonight, but it's a beautiful evening here in Oklahoma City, and I thought I'd do it outside. Had a couple days off. Uh, put a post out yesterday on um, Plaquenil and appropriate use, which I'm going to go back to. But first, we'll do statistics. Uh, just shy of 3 million people. Uh, infected with COVID documented in the world, about 207,000 deaths, um, just shy of a million uh, uh, infections in the United States. Pretty impressive on how we failed to control this. But again, I would say that's all FDA, CDC, NIH, Dr. Fauci. Again, it's a total fail because we had warnings, but a million people infected. Um, about 56,000 dead roughly or right around there. We'll crest into the 60s in the next two days and then we'll see if we're going to hit 80 and hopefully we'll stay under 100,000. Again, this is a very morbid subject, but you know, you just have to deal with it and talk about it. And you try to put it into this suspension zone of that these people who've died and then the people who didn't die and then are going to have long-term sequelae or side effects from the infection, which is going to be in the, you know, another 100,000 people plus, um, it just gets surreal. And then in Oklahoma, we're at just shy of 3,200 and just shy of 200 deaths. Um, let's start with Oklahoma. Um, things do appear to be slowing down slightly per our governor. He was on Fox News today because he looks like such a fool. Sorry for those of you who still like that self-made man, uh, Governor Stitt. Um, and Chris Wallace kind of had this incredulous look on his face the whole time as he was talking to Governor Stitt, who acts more like um, he's a male cheerleader for some college football team than he does a governor. Um, when Chris Wallace asked him about the fact that, you know, all the major medical groups in Oklahoma, and he referred to, they had a quote from the Oklahoma State Medical Association President, Dr. Monk, who just took over from Larry Bookman, and asked uh, Governor Stitt <laughs> what he thought about the fact that everyone had told, disagreed with him. He, his comment was, I don't even know who that is. Like, he's an idiot. Well, about just Governor, next time someone gets asks you that, you would say, well, I may not be familiar with the OSMA president, even though I've been meeting with the former OSMA president every two to three days for the last eight weeks, and you knew the transition had occurred because they went over all that with you, and you're lying on national TV, and those of us in, who know stuff in Oklahoma know you're lying. So it's great to have a lying governor. I just love that. Um, and then his comments to Chris about well, our cases are going down and all that. Yes, they are, but they're not going down as definitively as he said. We're not following any policies. But I'm not against us opening up the state. That isn't my point. My point is I think our governor's an idiot, and I think he's lied to all of us. He hasn't followed through, to follow through on anything he said, from testing to clarity, and he was going on and on about data. They haven't followed any data because they won't release any data. The state epidemiologists cannot give data to people who call and ask who are the stakeholders here in Oklahoma. The governor hasn't talked to any of the mayors, whether it's the mayor in Norman, they showed on TV, Gov uh, almost said Governor Holt, <laughs> uh, Mayor Holt, who definitely has been a leader, the mayor in Tulsa, the mayor, any of the mayors. He acts like this is a fiefdom at his disposal. So uh, Governor Stitt is not uh, doing his job. And not that I would ever start a recall thing for Governor Stitt, but this would be reasonable um, considering how it's going. But enough of that. So let's talk about Plaquenil. So I posted uh, some, just a brief study on Plaquenil out of China showing that it was effective for early use. Um, uh, just more data on that, because I had some people say, well, Plaquenil's terrible. I had it. I took it one time and got sick. Science isn't about one person's experience, okay? And I don't know who managed you, who told you how to do it. But when we start people on Plaquenil, which I've done many, many times, uh, even though I'm a gynecologist who does primary care, we'll get people started because in years past it would take three, six, eight months to get into a rheumatologist, so we'd start the care plan. Plaquenil is extremely well tolerated. About 5% of people have more significant stomach upset. That's about it. 
you know, they have some GI problems. It is not true that it is this devastatingly bad drug. And just to highlight that, a study I will post that I looked at today out of Korea, real interesting data, showed that they had about, they had an exposure of a healthcare worker, or no, a confirmed healthcare case, and they gave, and that person had 30 to 35 high risk exposures within the hospital and long term care facility, and then about 180 lower risk exposures, definite exposures. They put all of those people, about 225, 230, on Plaquenil, 200 milligrams twice a day for 14 days. The first thing to realize about this was they couldn't do a blinded study because they were not gonna screw around with people getting infected because they've seen what happens. So that's okay. So 95% of the people completed the course of the Plaquenil and had minimal to no side effects. 5% of those people had side effects that made them stop. Some were GI, and where they either got loose stool on the first day to the second day, or they got some nausea. And then one or two people had some bradycardia, and those people were already in the hospital and were being monitored. But all the outpatient people did great on it. So 95% of the people completed the course. So you have 300, or excuse me, 230 people who have a significant to extremely significant exposure where they were talking to that person within a few feet multiple times over several days. How many people ended up being infected with COVID? None, none of them got infected because Plaquenil is inhibitory to the onset of COVID because that's what it does. Just like the data I, public, I put out yesterday or, um, showed that COVID did ameliorate the disease event. The thing about Plaquenil, unlike chloroquine, is hydroxychloroquine is way easier to take and tolerate, which is why that's what we all use. We don't use chloroquine. So when you, anytime the FDA mixes in that chloroquine stuff, it's specific. It's specific to give negative energy to hydroxychloroquine. It's, they're not on board with it because it's not their idea. They've diminished any other university or scientific paper on it that's not from the United States. And as I've mentioned, Dr. Bright wouldn't allow any studies with hydroxychloroquine in an outpatient setting or in early use for sick patients who are just getting sick, which is where it works. It has its greatest effect. So again, there, it's being set up to fail here because the FDA is, is, again, not on our side. If you think the FDA is on your side, I'm not the person for you to listen to because I can document from the opioid crisis to this to so many things, the FDA has not been effective. So that's life. That's just how it is. Um, so hydroxychloroquine, great stuff if you start it early. Um, yes, we need more papers, and maybe in the end the papers will show that it isn't as effective as we were hoping. But when you're looking at a life-threatening disease where literally from onset to death can be two to three weeks, and that's gonna happen to 6% of the people who get symptomatic, and another 6% roughly are gonna become critically ill, uh, why wouldn't you do something so harmless right now that looks really effective? Because that's the other thing when people are talking about this, we're not talking about doing Plaquenil for two years. We're talking about doing it for five days, which is very well tolerated. Other things to be aware of is the country's gonna be opening. I'm all on board with that. Um, I just am not on board with disingenuous comments and lies and hiding statistics. But I think we need to open the country, but the solution for that is going to be zinc, as I'm telling you, you have to be on zinc 50 milligrams a day. You need to be on a multivitamin so that way your immune function is high. Doing those combined things, your alpha interferon is going to be high. You're going to have the right things on board to suppress your interleukins or these pro-inflammatory mediators. And that involves, again, melatonin and some vitamin D. And again, as I mentioned last week, there's some preliminary vitamin C data with really sick COVID patients that's super positive, but they were using it IV, which we're not going to do as a routine basis for, uh, 
for most of us, but at least a thousand milligrams of vitamin C a day, I think now is reasonable that I can support that. So that's again, what we want to focus on. Let's get our immune systems up. Let's wear masks and let's reintegrate into society. And then the other thing, you got to wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. And then as a final note, note, one of the things we're focusing on again is how do healthcare providers, how do dentists, how do these people get back into working and how do you work if you're a hairdresser or a tattoo artist or a massage person where you're going to be close to the person well the thing i'd suggest is get a zinc lozenge suck on it we know that zinc is inhibitory on a surface level to rna viruses that's very clearly uh, documented with va sorry vaginal gels that we use um, now there's data for for inhibition of uh, herpes and HPV. Um, we know that having zinc in the mucosal surface is going to be great. So if you have one of those jobs, sync on either a Zycam, that's a branded product, uh, tablet, well, as you're seeing people, it tastes horrible. I've done it. And, but you can find other ones that actually are more of like, um, more like cough drop type things and actually taste okay. Uh, but the Zycam ones are easily available. Uh, but you can find things to suck on with zinc. And then next this week, we're going to talk about hydrogen peroxide rinses and what's the role maybe for um, doing neti pots or something like a neti pot and constantly rinsing out your um, nasal passages uh, daily or twice a day. Um, there's going to be a role for that for decreasing infection. So anyway, that's the update. Sorry if, uh, you know, the Plaquenil stuff rubs people the wrong way, but, you know, you can't go with the with the baloney, you have to go with reality. And as someone who's a clinician who takes care of lots and lots and lots of people and has used this medicine as an initiator and as a maintenance person who prescribes it and having hundreds of patients on it that I haven't started it on, who I always ask them if they're getting their eye checks and how their stomach is, it's just routine for me. It is an extraordinarily safe and to well-tolerated medicine. And since the other side is you could die <laughs> if you get symptomatic with COVID, why not do it for five days until we have something better? So that's my theory on it. Um, take care. Best wishes. Good night.